Hi friends, welcome to another episode of General Surgery Made Easy. Today we will be discussing on a very important and repeatedly asked topic in basic science paper that is thyroid hormone synthesis. We will also be discussing on drugs acting at each of these stages in separate lecture. So first we will discuss this topic in a sequential manner. First of all let us brush up some basic physiology which is the hypothalamo pituitary thyroid axis. The paraventricular nucleus in the hypothalamus when stimulated causes it to release thyrotropin releasing hormone which in turn causes the anterior pituitary to release thyroid stimulatory hormone which is a stimulatory factor for the thyroid to secrete T3 and T4 and when these hormones are present in excess levels it's to, it acts as a negative feedback and to inhibit the ABOTO hormones. Coming to the steps in thyroid hormone synthesis, there are basically 5 steps involved in uh, thyroid hormone synthesis. The first one being iodide thyroid trapping, the next one is oxidation and iodination of thyroglobulin, third one is coupling reaction, then hydrolysis, then deiodination or peripheral conversion of T3 and T4. Before proceeding to these steps in detail, let us discuss about certain numerical values repeatedly asked in exams that is normal circulating levels of total and free thyroid hormones. Total or T4 is approximately 4.5 to 11 microgram per deciliter. T3 is 60 to 180 ng per deciliter. It can also be expressed in nanomole per liter which is uh, T4 55 to 150, T3 1.5 to 3.5. Coming to free T4 and T3, FT4 is 0.7 to 1.5 ng per deciliter. FT3 is 2 to 5 picogram per milliliter. As you all know, the functional unit of thyroid gland is a thyroid follicle. I have depicted a thyroid follicle here with an adjacent uh, blood vessel or a capillary and a lumen here. The thyroid follicle has three membranes. The membrane adjacent to the capillary is called the basal membrane and the membrane adjacent to the other thyroid follicle is a lateral membrane and the membrane facing the lumen is called the apical membrane. The basal and apical membrane has certain channels and enzymes which are responsible for transport of charged particles especially iodide uh, through the follicle and through the lumen. Out of total iodide intake from food only 20% enters the thyroid tissue. Since iodides are charged particles they cannot enter the tissue easily. Hence, we need an active transport mechanism or an iodide pump to push these iodides into the thyroid follicle and then again into the lumen. This is done by NIS or sodium iodide symporter which transports these iodides or charged particle against the concentration gradient along with two sodium which are again pumped back to the blood vessel. These iodides are again pumped back to the lumen with the help of a pendrin channel pathway. The apical membrane has certain enzymes and genes which are responsible for thyroid hormone synthesis that is TPO or thyroid peroxidase enzyme and TOX2 gene. The basal membrane has a chief receptor that is thyroid uh, TSH receptor. Having learned this, let's go to the steps proper that is whenever there is release of TSH from the anterior pituitary, it binds to the TSH receptor and it results in activation of three pathways. The first one being production of thyroglobulin through activation of certain genes and mRNA production. Uh, thyroglobulin is nothing but a long chain of protein with multiple uh, proteins embedded on it. The chief one being a protein called tyrosine. The second one is activation of a chief enzyme which I have seen before that is thyro thyroid peroxidase. The third one is the activation of NIS channel or sodium iodide symporter channel which results in the first step that is iodide trapping that is trapping of iodide into the thyroid follicle. The next step is oxidation or in simple term is conversion of the iodide to iodine molecule in the presence of TPO enzyme. It, it is known as oxidation reaction. The, the next reaction is iodination of thyroglobulin that is binding of inorganic iodine to organic thyroglobulin compound in the presence of TPO enzyme. Hence this reaction is also called organification reaction. When one iodine molecule combines with the tyrosine molecule it is called MIT or monoiodothyrosine. When two iodine molecule combines with the tyrosine molecule it is called DIT or diiodothyrosine. These, these molecules in presence of TPO when combined together that is one MIT and one DIT combined to form a T3 
and 2DAD combined to form D4. These reactions are called coupling reaction. These complex proteins are again taken back to the thyroid follicle by a process called endocytosis where they are broken down to simpler T3 and T4 forms by the enzyme called lysosome. And this process is the fourth step in thyroid hormone synthesis that is hydrolysis. This T3 and T4 are again taken back into the circulation. Here they are combined with the thyroid binding globulin produced by liver and transported to the circulation. The fifth step is called deiodination. In simpler terms it is a 5 deiodination of the outer ring of T4 or peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. Hence we have seen each and every step of thyroid hormone synthesis in detail. The next lecture will be on drugs affecting each of these steps. Before that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for further videos. Thank you.